Hi, welcome to this very special sneak peek at Adobe Photoshop CS3 Beta. I'm your host, Macworld Senior Editor Chris Breen, and a barely working Senior Editor Chris Breen at that. In this special podcast, Jason Snell, Macworld's Editorial Director, takes the reins and first interviews the Senior Product Manager for Photoshop, John Knack. Following the interview, Jason shows you some of the cool new tools that you'll find in the Adobe Photoshop CS3 Beta. We'll start with the interview. So, John, what was behind the idea of doing a public beta for Photoshop CS3? Well, as you, as you can probably imagine, uh, customers and, and we have all been really eager to get an uh, Intel native version of Photoshop into the world as quickly as we could. And uh, it's been a long road, but we're finally there with something that's uh, it's not perfect, but we think it runs really well. And um, we thought a public beta would be a great way to um, let Photoshop customers get their hands on the newest stuff even though, you know, it's not fully baked, but uh, it's good enough that we think people can do some interesting stuff right now. So it's safe to say that one of the big motivators here is getting something out that's Intel native for all those Mac users who are out there, even though it's a Windows release too. It's... Right, right. I, I'd, I'd even go as far as to say that was the motivator. Um, I think, you know, we there are lots of other good reasons. Um, you know, we, we love to deliver functionality sooner. Um, it lets people kick the tires on new OSs. Uh, 10.5 and Vista and everything. But really, the extraordinary thing here that motivated us was, was the whole Intel transition on the Mac. And, you know, we really think that uh, CS3 flies native. And so we wanted to get that into folks' hands as soon as we could. So the way it works is you go to Adobe's uh, Adobe Lab website uh -huh. and you put in your CS2 serial number, yes. is that right? And you get yes. a CS3 uh, beta test serial number kicked yep. back to you. Exactly. Exactly. And the beta expires? Uh, it expires uh, a little bit after we ship. So, you know, early summer, late spring, early summer. Great. Um, so later on in this video, we're going to do some screenshots and some demos. I know mean, you're the demo master. Uh, what are the features that you think are the most interesting for people to watch out for when they uh, when they download CS3? Oh, well, it kind of depends on, on who you are. Um, you know, for uh, digital photographers, there's Camera Raw 4 and Bridge. Uh, both of which have been really beefed up. Uh, Camera Raw now has the same processing engine that's in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. And so those products are compatible. They've all got the same really cool uh, raw processing controls. Um, inside Photoshop itself, we've done some, some cool stuff around making selections. We've got a new quick selection tool. We've got um, now for the first time uh, an answer to what's probably been the longest standing feature request in Photoshop, which is for non-destructive re-editable filters. And we've done it in a way that's, that's kind of cool. It actually, because it uses smart objects, it can be applied to raw files, uh, vector artwork, um, all kinds of different media. So um, that's, that's cool. Also, there's some really neat stuff around um, automatically aligning and blending layers. And then for photographers, there's uh, some improvements to high dynamic range imaging. So if you take bracketed shots, you can now uh, automatically align those and get a much crisper 32-bit image that you can then manipulate further. So um, we saw that this past year, there was a, a Flickr pool that started um, showing up because of HDR being in CS2. Right. Well, that's been taken much further now in the public beta. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot, and there's a bunch of stuff I'm, I'm forgetting to even mention now. Well, you mentioned the uh, the auto line of layers, which mm. is a, certainly a feature near and dear to my heart. The mm. idea that you can take several shots, um, and have Photoshop figure out that they all, you know, were kind of close but not quite right, mm -hmm. and stick them together to the point where, if you've got, you know, somebody smiling in one snapshot and not in the other, mm -hmm. um, and vice versa for somebody else in that image, you just kind of can paint one of them out without having to do any weird transforms or anything like that, which I think is going to be a big one. Yeah, we hope so. Um, yeah, it, it's neat. It's uh, I think you can use it in a lot of different ways. That's sort of a classic problem. Is uh, you know, the group shot might. Uh, if my dad's watching, uh, dad uh, always manages to kind of blink or something in a shot. But, um, you know, it, if, you, if you take enough images, you can then basically stitch them together by hand and get the best folks from each one. Um, and so you can use it for that. You can also use it for um, doing some kind of creative effects. In the San Jose Grand Prix this summer, I took bursts of cars uh, drifting around corners and then used it to automatically align those and get um, the background to be totally... Uh, consistent, but then put multiple copies of the car going around. So 
I think people are going to come up with some really creative uses. Well, I mean, isn't that always the story? You, you guys come up with some ideas, and you're obviously listening to your customers, but at the same time, you know, you turn a, a feature loose on the world, and you have no way to predict how people are going to use yeah, it. Yeah, that's 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 really the, the most fun part of it. Um, and Russell Brown, who works at Adobe, is sort of uh, sort of provocateur in chief, you know, and he's always uh, creatively misusing things and, and making something really cool happen. So, uh, believe me, he's been uh, so he's been swinging by my office a lot. With, oh, yeah, yeah. What if I did this? You know. So, so is cool. the magic wand dead? Have we have we replaced? <laughs> have we resurrected it as something different now with uh, Photoshop CS3? Well, you know, it depends. If you go to certain uh, certain speakers, you'll you'll hear about the tragic wand tool. <laughs> um, and so it's not dead. I mean, there's, you know, there's always there's always uses always for uses for things. Um, but the the new quick selection tool, I think, makes it pretty quick and, and pretty easy uh, to just click and drag instead of having to do a bunch of clicks and shift clicks and so forth. So um, yeah, we, we you know, especially now the computers are so much faster, you can do a lot more image processing on the fly and still have a, a really good experience. And. Uh... Camera Raw it has has seen some big improvements in Bridge with this version, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like I say, the the engine is now aligned with uh, Photoshop Lightroom, and so um, edits you make in one will will come through the other. There are some new controls like um, Fill Light, which is if you think of Shadow Highlight, it's sort of the shadow end of that. Uh, also, Recovery for getting um, the highlights back. Some really cool black and white controls, uh, split toning. Uh, there is a um, parametric tone curve as well as the um, the tone curve that was there previously, and uh, we may even uh, have a few more things up our sleeves uh, by the time we ship. We don't want to you know give everything away now. Sure, understandable. What but, but yeah, it's it's kind of a it's you know just camera raw on its own is kind of a big big release. What's your favorite feature in this new beta? Oh, I don't know. That's like you got to pick one. Picking kids. Um, I think the alignment stuff. Um, I've I've had just a lot of fun kind of pushing that new new ways. I think um, you know a lot of a lot of what we're doing around like uh, filtering is sort of uh, it's like okay yeah it makes sense great glad I have it move on. Um, but with some of the new image science stuff, you can really push it in sort of creative ways, and I think uh, that's what makes it a lot of fun to play with. Well, I know my holiday cards this year are going to be. Made using the auto align command, okay. and I thank you for that in a more pedestrian way. But you can't cool. get the kids to sit still that's at the right. same time. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah, it's it's looking really great. So awesome. We've got a chance to play with awesome. it. So thanks. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Jason will now demonstrate some of Photoshop CS3's compelling new features, including a cool new way to combine the best part of two images. I have a Photoshop document with two images in it from digital camera, one where the woman is looking at the camera and one when her two male friends are looking at the camera. What I'm going to do is select both layers, which you can do now in Photoshop CS3. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and I'm going to choose the new Align Layers command. Auto Align Layers. Choose Auto for this. And it's going to sit and think for a moment and it's going to match up those two layers so that they're pretty darn close together. If I toggle the visibility of the top layer, you can see they're pretty close, um, which is going to enable us to do merging of the two images. So I'm going to take my lasso tool and very roughly just sort of snip out the part of the top level that I, I know I'm not going to want. I, I've got the guys looking right at the camera in the other image, so I'm just going to delete that. And the next trick is going to be to use the eraser tool to do some spot work where I'm erasing away that top image of the man in the center and um, blending it in very carefully with the woman on the right. Now if I toggle back and forth you can see I've created an image that's pretty smooth with her looking at the camera from a separate frame. Let me show you the auto blend feature of Photoshop CS3. I've got a panorama that I stitched together using the auto align layers command in CS3. But if you look at the scoreboard and the fence, you'll see that it really doesn't match up very well. So in order to blend those layers better together, I'm going to choose Auto Blend Layers. Photoshop's going to think for a little while, and when it comes back, you're going to see the scoreboard and the fence really join together in a much more natural way. Uh, and the great news here is you can still do more work on this after the fact, because these layers are all actually saved as layer masks, so you can do more editing and refine your choices later. To make an editable smart filter, first select an object and choose Convert for Smart Filters. Then run a filter, and what you'll see down in the layer palette 
when we hit OK here, a new item, Smart Filters with Motion Blur, will be listed. If I double click on that, those items are all editable. I can actually change the settings of my Motion Blur, hit OK, and they'll be taken into account. And if I double click it again, I can make the changes. I can change the angle. Hit OK again. Again, this is all non-destructive. And in fact, I can actually go down into the layer palette and turn it off and turn it back on if I want to. Putting an end to the tragic wand is Photoshop CS3's quick selection tool. I select it here, and then I actually just paint on what I want to select. I can change the size of the brush if I want. It's going to automatically make some guesses about what I want to select. If it overreaches, you just hold down the Option key, and then click, and it will learn and make a refined selection. And I'm going to touch up a little bit more up there. And then I'm going to go up to the brush menu, uh, reduce the size of my brush a little bit so that I can mark some little tiny areas for deletion and it'll automatically take care of that. Now let's move over to another new feature, which is the Refine Edge command, which will let me do even more with my selection. Uh, from the Refine Edge dialog, I can actually change a lot of settings, the radius and contrast, help define the edge, the smoothness of the edge, um, set how much feathering I want, I can contract or expand my selection a little bit, and I can change how I view this. I can actually view it on uh, just as a cutout, I can view it on a white or black background uh, with a red highlight around it or just the marching ants. I have a detailed digital camera image I want to share on the web. So I'm going to use Photoshop's new Zoomify feature. I choose Zoomify from the export submenu. Choose what background for the web page that I want to use, white, gray, or black. Uh, give it a name, set some settings. And what it's going to do is generate something that includes a flash widget um, and a sort of Google Maps style interface uh, for my image, which will let people download a basically a thumbnail uh, here it is in Safari, and you can actually click and navigate around, and it only loads more image data as you zoom in. So I can zoom in, there is the third baseman, I can drag over to the pitcher's mound, you can see it loading, I can use the controls on the bottom of the flash widget to change the zoom, it loads as I scroll. And there you have it, our look at what appears to be a compelling upgrade to Photoshop. Check out the beta at labs.adobe.com. See you next time.